ladies and gentlemen, good evening and thank you for tuning in to Canal Algeria's nightly news. On to the headlines. Representing the President of the Republic, the Premier Nadir Al Arbawi takes part in the inauguration ceremony of Mohammed Wild Sheikh Al Ghazwani as the President of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania. Army General Chief of Staff of the People's National Army, Saeed Chingriha, supervises the inauguration ceremony of a garrison circle in Musaada, the first military region. The public prosecution exposes the implication of three previous presidency aspiring candidates in corruption during the process of collecting individual signatures. Statements and details coming up. Welcome again. First off, representing the President of the Republic, the Premier Nadir Al Arba, we met in workshop with the President of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania, Mohammed Wilde Sheikh Al Ghazwani, to whom he conveyed the greetings of the President of the Republic as well as his sincere congratulations for his re election. Nadir Al Arba additionally reaffirmed to the Mauritanian President the willingness of the President of the Republic to strengthen the cooperation and partnership between the two countries and to intensify the political dialogue concerning regional and international issues of common interest. For his part, the Mauritanian president expressed profound gratitude to the president of the Republic for Algeria's participation in his inauguration ceremony at the head of the Islamic Republic of Mauritania. On these sidelines of his participation in this ceremony, the Premier Nadir Al Arbawi met with the President of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic, Brahim Ghali, who addressed the profound gratitude of the leaders of the government and the people of the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic to the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Boun, for his firm and constant support to the Sahrawi people and their fair cause, as well as Algeria's sustained efforts, notably at the level of the Security Council, in accordance with the principles and ideas of the Glorious Liberation war of November 1st and 1954. In other news, and as part of the commemorative activities of the National Day of the People's National Army, Army General Saeed Chingriha, Chief of Staff of the People's National Army, inaugurated today Garrison Circle in Busada in the first military region. The inauguration of this hotel establishment reflects the importance given by the High Command of the PNA to the monitoring and inspection of the various infrastructure projects of social nature, which the PNA has acquired in recent years. Present in the ceremony were the commander of the first military region, the Controller General of the Army, the Head of the Social Directorate, the Central Directors of the Ministry of National Defense, and the General Staff of the PNA. On this occasion, the Army General supervised a detailed presentation on the various amenities and services provided by the Circle to the personnel of the military units deployed in the region. Afterwards, the Army General visited the components of the Circle and received comprehensive explanations on the services offered and the amenities available in this hotel and Infrastructure. In this respect, the Army General gave instructions and guidelines to the executives and staff of this establishment on the need to ensure its maintenance and provide quality services living up to the expectations of the beneficiary personnel. At the end of this visit, the Army General met with the personnel and executives of this new girls and circle, extending to them congratulations for this important achievement before signing the circle's golden book. According to the National Independent Authority for Elections, the electoral campaigns for the presidential elections of September the 7th will kick off on August the 15th. During a press conference organized by the General Prosecutor of the Algiers Court, the implication of the three candidates in cor corruption affairs during the process of the collection of individual signatures. In his statement, Lotfi bin Jama stated that 50 elected voted to sign an official documents in exchange of sums of money. Let's listen. التحقيق أصفر عن وجود ثلاث مستويات 
Regarding the first category, the investigation revealed after hearing more than 50 people in quality of electors on minutes of the investigation services, most of them admitted receiving certain amount of money ranging between 20,000 dinars and 30,000 dinars. The second category is the list of intermediators who collected the money and handed over to these electors. Ten people were heard and all admitted to have been engaged in these unacceptable practices. The results of the third category revealed three people who applied for candidacy in the presidential elections. The general prosecutor revealed the continuation of the preliminary investigation open to apprehend any person involved, affirming that the justice will intransigent with anyone who seeks to undermine the transparency of the electoral process. Let's listen again. The judicial police services are closely monitoring and expanding the preliminary investigation open to arrest all those involved in these incidents under the supervision of the judicial unit specialized in the fight against corruption, especially that these incidents are related to the corruption and electoral laws. Therefore, the law will be strict against anyone allowing himself to disrupt the smooth running and transparency of the elections. أن تكون محل حماية قانونية ومتابعة صارمة من العدالة. As we've seen, the presidential elections are marking the political scene in Algeria. And to ensure professional international media coverage in the best conditions, the National Organization of Algerian Journalists organized a meeting with correspondents of various international media outlets accredited in Algeria as important media partners to cover the electoral process in all its stages in light of the rapidly challenging, changing international situation. The full story with Ines Kilo. The electoral vision became clearer after the announcement of the final list of presidential candidates for this crucial event on September 7th. It is an electoral path that requires immediate professional and impartial media coverage. The international media today, with their accredited correspondents and staff, are fully focused on this important event. They are facing a clear media duty to provide information about the electoral process. Of course, now we have entered the serious stage, that of the forthcoming presidential election, which is attracting the attention of almost all the media, whether national or even international, because Algeria is an active actor in the Mediterranean or northern region. Africa and even the Arab region is therefore bound to follow the importance of this event on the part of the international media. The international channels accredited in Algeria accompany the event as they accompanied several other electoral dates. And what is also required is to explain any difficulties from any side in order to work in the best conditions. The upcoming entitlement is not only concerned Algeria and Algerians, but it has an impact on the Arab countries, especially the North African region or the African continent in general. An important political date accompanied by international media accrediting the electoral process, respecting the Charter of Professional Journalistic Practice, which enshrines the principle of discipline and commitment, as it is an integral part of Algerian media field and a live transmitter of information with transparency and integrity while investigating the source of news. In cooperation, an agreement was made to form a joint working group and develop a roadmap to enhance cooperation relations between Algeria and Cote d'Ivoire and prepare a draft agreement in energy. During the talks that took place via video conference, the Minister of Energy and Mines, Mohamed Arqab, and the Minister of Mines, Petroleum and Energy of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, Mamadou Sangofoa Kolibadl, discussed the state of bilateral relations and ways to strengthen and develop them, particularly in the field of energy and mines. The two ministers reviewed opportunities for cooperation between the two countries at all stages of the value chain the hydrocarbon sector. They also discussed opportunities for cooperation in the field of electricity production and transmission, as well as maintenance and manufacture of electrical equipment, a training and exchange of expertise in these areas between the two countries. In related news, let's head to Milan now, where Sonalgas and Sonatrack both signed a memorandum of understanding with the Italian company Uni. This agreement establishes a general framework and a foundation for the involved parties to conduct studies on a project to interconnect the electrical grids between Algeria and Italy. Menon Mafa with more. 
Via the signing of this agreement, the Algerian Italian cooperation takes a significant step forward. The three energy giants, Sonerga, Sonetrak, and the Italian company Oni, signed a memorandum of understanding to jointly conduct feasibility studies for the ambitious project of electrical interconnection between Algeria and Italy. This will involve laying an undersea cable linking the electrical grids of both countries. <laughs> Following this protocol, we will study the technical, economic and environmental aspects. This project will allow us to export electricity. This partnership between Sonatrak and Oni is historic. We have the habit of working together and we work very well. Algeria was crucial during the Italian and European energy crisis. We have become the most important gas contributor for Italy. And now, with this project, we will also have very important investments on the renewable part and the electrical part. This initiative aligns with Algeria's ambitions to position itself as a key energy supplier. We will first conduct an evaluation followed by several stages to realize this undersea cable. This project coincides with the implementation of a 15,000 megawatts renewable energy program by 2035 with Sonal Gas, having already launched the first phase of 3,200 megawatts, which is currently underway. On the sidelines of this meeting, important discussions were held in Milan between a delegation from Sonatrak and Sonalgas and representatives from the American company Baker Hughes, which specializes in the manufacturing of energy equipment. On to the daily international window, where the situation within the Moroccan royal palace is on the verge of collapse. A fierce war broke out to succeed Mohammed VI, whose state of health has deteriorated. The situation made worse by the current contacts, in particular the Zionist influence on the regime. Inas Kilo gives us the details. Nothing is going well in the Mahzen. For some time now, the war has been at its worst in the royal palace, where a merciless war of succession is waging. The Moroccan security services and military are clashing over a war for the throne to succeed Mohammed VI, whose health is declining, a situation that has given rise to bloody infighting between Prince Rashid's private guard and the private guard of Crown Prince Hassan, Mohammed VI's oldest son. Donc c'est vrai que cette question est posée avec beaucoup d'équité, que logiquement la succession se fera de So it is true that this question has been raised by many members of parliament, that logically the succession will be vertical, so from father to son, so it is his son who will take power. But it seems that there are some family problems between sisters and brothers who insist that power should not be given to an inexperienced young man like Mohammed's sixth son. Mais il n'en demeure pas moins que la question effectivement de la succession aura un enjeu politique national et international considérable. All this is happening at a time when Zionist influence is imposing itself on all the Mahzan's decisions. The country come under the total control of the Zionist entity, particularly since the normalization agreements, the architect of which is none than the king's controversial advisor, Andre Azoulay, was awarded one of the Zionist entity's highest honors for services rendered. Azoulay, was, who was advisor to King Hassan II and then to his successor's son, wants to impose Prince Hassan. Like his father, Prince Hassan needs a life of luxury, with luxury cars and private jets, and already boosts a fortune of almost 1 billion euros. Paradoxically, the country is in the throes of an unprecedented socio-economic and political crisis, a situation made all the worse by normalization of the Zionist entity, which has created a crack inside the Mahzen and led to a wave of anger and protest among the Moroccan people. Algeria's civil society is united in strong solidarity with the Sahrawi people, condemning the French government's recent actions as a destabilizing interference in Western Sahara, which gained widespread criticism. Menen Maafa, once again. It is not surprising for Algeria and its people to stand with just causes. The Sahrawi cause, which has seen no political developments due to France's unjust stance against the Sahrawi people, has received unwavering support from civil society organizations. We have already said it. Algeria's position is very clear. We are not hypocrites when it comes to international just causes, and we want a final solution for the Sahrawi cause. I am here to support the brotherly Sahrawi people and the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. 
We are here to condemn the French government's actions, which represent a blatant interference that contradicts international legality. The disgraceful stance of the French government will not deter the Sahrawi people from continuing their struggle and rallying the support of freedom-loving people around the world. The Sahrawi people have proven through their resilience and resistance over 51 years that they will continue their fight until colonialism is completely eradicated despite all attempts and maneuvers against them. And once again, we express our gratitude to Algeria. The European Union has also reaffirmed its commitment to supporting international legitimacy and seeking a solution within the framework of the United Nations, the General Assembly resolutions and the Security Council. Algeria's civil society expresses their strong solidarity with the Sahrawi people by condemning the French government, which is currently attempting to sow discord in the region through its interference in the international affairs of Western Sahara, thereby destabilizing the region. The condemnation also came from within France, where a prominent figure from political parties and human rights organizations denounced this unilateral and isolated decision, calling it a diplomatic and historical mistake that violates international legality. Let's turn our attention to sports now. The biggest event right now, the 2024 Olympic Games. Algerian boxer Iman Khalif won her first game. Our national champion now qualified to the quarterfinal under 66 kilogram category. Here is a statement of Iman Khalif on whom many hopes are based. Congratulations to our champion and good night. First of all, I would like to thank the Algerian people, hoping for a second victory. I'm doing my best to make the Algerian people proud. I'm very focused with one goal, snatching the golden medal. Algeria.